don't go and write plenty things please if you think plenty things will help you too please write plenty things my letter was a page long like just one page that's all i wrote welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Akia Sechua welcome to this amazing family if you're a returning subscriber thank you for coming back long time no sit down video I know like I said in my previous videos I was going to talk about some of the documents that you need when you're applying for your study visa to Canada so in this video we'll be talking about what goes into writing a letter of explanation or a study plan or statement of purpose for visa application so if this is something that you're interested in watching please watch to the end don't forget to hit the subscribe button share this video with all your friends and loved ones and tell them Akia has posted another video so a little disclaimer though I am in no way an immigration expert or an immigration official I'm just sharing my personal experiences and experiences of others and I hope that it helps somebody some way somehow so let's get right into the video so a letter of explanation or a study plan or a statement of purpose for study visa application is a document that is an essential part of your application process it's a document that explains to the visa officer who you are what you want to study in Canada why you want to study in Canada and how you intend to fund your tuition or your living expenses while you're in Canada so um, as you all know the visa process for a student for international students coming to Canada does not involve any face-to-face -face interview. So this document is what you would use to explain to the visa officer everything about you. You need to make it detailed but concise. Explain to the visa officer your educational background, your professional background, why you decided to study in Canada and not in your home country, and also how you intend to fund your, um, your studies whilst you come to Canada. So um, this video will be divided into two parts. The first part would be um, to provide you with general information on how to write this study plan or this um, letter of explanation. The second part will be that I would read my study plan or my letter of explanation for you guys so that it would help you um, in writing yours. However, you should know that you cannot write exactly what I wrote because your experiences might be different from mine. And you need to tailor your study plan to your own um, qualification or your own um, professional background. So you cannot use my study plan as yours. So it's just to provide a guide to you on how to write yours so that you can at least have a fair idea on how it's written. Start the letter of explanation would be your introduction. So the introduction will basically be an information about yourself, right? So your name, your background, your little a little bit about your professional background, a little bit about your academic background and why you're writing the letter, right? So that would be in the introduction. So immediately the person reads the first section of your, the first paragraph of your letter, the, best, the, the visa officer would know that you're writing to seek for a study visa or a study permit to come study in Canada. So you don't have to put like a lot of information in the introduction. Your name is so and so, you're a Ghanaian, you know, um, you have a bachelor's degree in um, so so and so from this university and you're seeking to apply for a study visa because you gain admission to that da, 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 school in Canada. That's an introduction, very simple and short. Going on, you, you talk about how um, the program you intend to study would relate to your past experiences, right? So um, you want to study public admission. I can use myself as an example because I, <laughs> I wrote mine. So I you basically talk about how your past, let's say you have a degree in political science and how that relates to the public administration that you want to study. Or if you say you want to study an engineering program, you can say that um, your background in mechanical engineering relates to the master's program you intend to study in Canada. Whatever program that you intend to study, make sure that you link um, the, your past experience or your past educational background to the program that you intend to study in Canada. Also, you also talk about um, 
why you chose to go to that particular school maybe um the school has some kind of reputation or research um you know certification or something you need to include the reason why you chose to study that particular that, that particular program in canada and not in your home country if you have professional background or if you've been working before you decided to study you need to explain why you know um you want to leave your job to study in canada and how that benefits you you know as a person so like professionally you want to advance yourself and that's the reason why you want to study in canada so you, you need to explain to them that you know your professional career links directly to the program you want to study so you want to advance yourself professionally in that field you know whatever reason you have for wanting to study in canada should be included in the study plan you need to also explain to the visa officer that you have strong ties to your home country it could be a business it could be that you've been working in a company for five years you need to attach you know um a pay stub or pay slips from your old job like your current job in your home country to explain that you've been working with them for so long and that you might you would want to come back and continue your job after you finish studying you need to explain in the letter that you have attached if it's if you are attaching um pay stubs or pay slips from your office if you are attaching appointment letters you need to also state that you have attached all these documents to um to the visa application process so immediately the person picks your your letter he or she would go and find those documents that you stated in the letter another way to also show um, ties to your home country could be a property that you own if you have lands that have been registered to your name if you have like any any form of property can be included so you can say that you have a property here that belongs to you you have family here in ghana or in whatever country you are applying from so you have strong reasons to come back to your home country after your school that is very important because i have so many friends who have been denied visa because they were not able to explain to the visa officer that they have strong ties to their home country so please ensure that you have explained into detail that you have strong ties to your home country and that you come back to your home country after you finish school another important section of your study plan or a letter of explanation will be your financial plan it's important to explain to the visa officer how you intend to fund your tuition so if you intend to apply for a scholarship or if you have gotten a scholarship you have to explain that in your letter of explanation in your letter of explanation you need to state the amount of scholarship that you received and where it came from if you intend to sponsor yourself you need to explain in the letter that you intend to sponsor yourself you pay your tuition you pay for your living expenses attach your bank statement or your financial documents to the visa application so anytime the visa officer decides to confirm whatever you're saying there's a document that backs what you're saying right don't just state that you have money in this account and not have a document attached to it how can the visa officer confirm what you're saying so if you are sponsoring yourself add bank statement if it's fixed deposit ensure that the total amount you are intending to sponsor yourself with is stated in the letter of explanation if somebody is sponsoring you if your uncle or a family member is the one sponsoring you you need to mention the person's name where he works how much he intends to sponsor you with and how he relates to you so you cannot just say that uh, my uncle is so so and so and he's sponsoring me with 2000 cities and so that's it no you need to attach your uncle's bank statement um his full name where he works if you have a you can include a passport um a picture of his um passport you can scan that and attach it to to the uh, visa application right if you decide to also add your own personal bank statement to support your uncle's sponsorship so you explain that my uncle is sponsoring me with ten thousand cities and i also have a savings of maybe fifteen thousand cities to, su uh, to support my education so now you have two documents that support your education right make sure you state that and attach those documents to the visa application so in this section i'm going to read my study plan or my letter of explanation however you call it is the same thing 
for your study visa applications let's go so my introduction so the title is just study plan or a little of explanation no plenty things go straight to the point don't write plenty i think some people somebody also asked me how many pages they are required to write i don't think there's a set number of pages you need to write but you know the visa officers are also very busy and look at the number of applications that they receive on a daily basis so you don't want to write a lengthy letter my letter was a page long like just one page go straight to the point i've seen other people's letter being three pages five pages you know I'm not saying it's not right but i wrote just a page so if your 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 information is more than a page please go ahead and do that but just make sure it's concise and it's detailed enough all right, all right so i am hannah situa and i am so 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 years old <laughs> and i'm a Ghanaian by birth I hold a bachelor's degree in political science from Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and I'm currently employed at Sister and Soul Company as a personal assistant to the executive director. I'm applying for a study permit to continue my studies um, in public administration at University of Regina in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. That is my introduction. Very simple. So uh, my career goal is to develop professionally as a policy analyst and an administrator. And this will be through the study of governance and administration, strategic management in the public sector, ethical leadership and public policy analysis under the MPA program. The elements of diversity and globalization are essential to policy making and public administration. It is therefore recommended that a good public analyst needs to recognize foreign cultures and principles, appreciate and critically evaluate public issues and offer proven solutions. Therefore, studying this program in Canada and not in my home country was commended by this fundamental principle. Canada hosts some of the best policy and public policy and public administration institutions in the world that boast of some great academic curricula, access to experts in public administration, rich multicultural um wait, what did i say rich multiculturalism and a safe community that promotes academic excellence in comparison to the academic curricula of the various higher learning institutions in ghana that offer public policy and administration the university of regina provides access to world-class tutors in public administration who will provide more solid grounds and insights into the subject also, the Johnson Shoyama Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Regina has a diverse and, and inclusive learning environment with exceptional academic programs and high impact research facilities to provide quality education. So the University of Regina also offers um, internship opportunities to its students to enhance their professional experience in the federal and provincial public service. With the growth in my country's economy, there is an increase in demand for public administrators and analysts, which results in high employability rates for masters in public administration graduates. I believe I will make a significant impact and contribute to development in my home country on the international stage and also build a robust professional career for myself. My tuition and living expenses in Canada will be funded by my uncle, so so and so, who is so so and so. <laughs> if your uncle is a manager somewhere, mention that. And he has been instrumental in my education and career path. Nevertheless, I also have a personal savings investment of 10,000 Canadian dollars, which is equivalent to so so and so in Ghana cities towards my education. I have attached to this visa application a copy of his bank statement and other supporting documents. I have the full support of my family for my education in Canada. I look forward to an opportunity to pursue the study of MPA at the University of Regina in Canada. Thank you. And we are done. That's all I wrote. That's all I wrote.
don't go and write plenty things, please. If you think plenty things will help you too, please write plenty things. I hope you picked a thing or two from my study plan and I hope it helps you in writing yours. If you have watched the video from the beginning to the end, please subscribe, share this video to all your friends and loved ones, tell them to come and join this amazing family, hit the like button and leave me a comment with any question you may have in the comment section below and I'll gladly answer that for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay blessed. Bye.